where, th- where consumers think it's going, we see a lot of potential. The reason for optimism uh, is really summarized nicely, I think, by this pie chart. What this chart represents, and I really focused it here particularly on food products so that we have similar information for non-food consumables and durables and uh, other products as well, but just as an indication of where the type of thing that people buy every day, their food, that um, a majority of people are saying that in the future they would intend to uh, continue buying it in what we'll call a green form, which for our purposes is shorthand for sustainability. It has fewer syllables, if you will. 43% of people are saying that they've never bought food in that form to their knowledge or to their intention in the past, nor do they intend to do so in the future. Um, that's a pretty big segment and one that we'll talk a little bit more about shortly. But the three green slices that you see here, these are the people who have bought food in this form at least, at, at least once in the past. And within that, 17% of them say that they're actually buying more and continue to intend to buy more in the future. So they're on board with it and they're buying more of it. Another significant segment, 21%, has bought it in the past and continues to buy it at the same level. It's only 5% of the U.S. adults that have bought it in the past that are buying less. And often the reason for that is because of the economic situation. So a, a couple messages here is that the people who buy continue to buy as a general rule. And there's another a sizable group, that 15% in that gray pie slice, if you will, people who have never bought it in, in the past but who say they want to in the future and that they intend to. The way I translate this is I think green, if, if it's not on, a, on a, hockey step up, a hockey stick upward ramp, if you will, of demand, it's certainly in many ways holding its own with a pent-up demand from people who are interested in uh, doing it in the future. And presumably as the economic um, uh, uh, situation stabilizes and, and, and hopefully improves, uh, we'll see more of that uh, pent-up demand uh, realized. So that begs the question, who are green consumers and who's not? Um, they come in many shades of green, as you will shortly see. Before I go into that, though, I want to just give you a little bit of grounding of where some of the data I'm going to be talking about come from. There's really two main sources that, that I'll be referring to. One is called Eco Insights. Eco Insights is a syndicated survey that I launched with my business partner when we created our sense uh, three years ago to really fulfill what we saw as a huge gap in the marketplace trying to understand why there were so many people with a positive orientation in terms of their attitude, but a lack of follow-through in terms of their behavior. Um, so the syndicated study that we do studies their attitudes and behaviors towards eco-friendly, sustainable, and green products. It is a U.S. adult study. It's not focused on the green su- consumers exclusively. It's all adults. We do it online, and we do it in a fairly large-scale way with 30,000 people each time we collect data. 60,000, now 60,000 a year, because that gives us a lot of capability to delve down into the different products and segments and geographies um, and shopping venues that are so critical to really understanding what's happening in this marketplace. It covers 142 different product categories. I'm only going to show you a few slivers of data from a number of them, but just so you know, it's in the area of food and beverages, other consumables, and some of the major durables, such as appliances and automotive. Um, We also look at where they shop, so 84 different retail chains are covered, most of the major grocery chains, mass club, etc. And this is used as the basis for our segmentation that I'll show you shortly that we refer to as uh, dimensions. In addition, we also have a a monthly tracking study that we co-sponsor with GreenBiz.com that, as I mentioned, tracks the green marketplace. And it's a study of 2,500 people each month that we use to create what's referred to as the Green Confidence Index, um, a measure of the potential in the green marketplace. So that's housekeeping background uh, for you so you know where some of my data is. through our LOHAS uh, Consumer Trends 
LOHAS, for those of you who aren't familiar with the acronym, stands for Lifestyles of Health and Sustainability. And we have been doing this research since 2002, which gives us some pretty interesting trend lines on what's going on in the marketplace, where consumers are, where they've been coming from, uh, and hopefully where we're headed. We've done this research in Japan and Europe as well, uh, and that well, this will be the primary basis of, of my presentation today. There's a variety of content in the database. I don't want to walk through this slide specifically, but just know that we measure attitudes and behaviors and usage patterns and information sources and all sorts of other things, uh, again, which I'll be drawing on throughout the course of this. So with that background, uh, what is the state of sustainability? How is it? Uh, we certainly see that it's moving to a mainstream uh, point in the marketplace, but it's been a rotten year and, quite honestly, not a great decade. So let's look at where consumers are. And this is a summary of our consumer segmentation model. We start with a general population sample, so it's reflective of age and gender and education and income all across the United States. And we then do a fairly sophisticated uh, segmentation process that places each individual into one of five segments based on their the strength of their attitudes and behaviors for sustainability. So. The first consumer that I'd like to talk about is the low house consumer. They are 19% of the population, and they are really the active stewards of the environment. They're, they have the strongest attitudes across uh, environmental issues and social issues, as well as personal health and wellness. Uh, to them, sustainability not, means not just taking care of the planet, but also taking care of their own, their own health. And like I said before, this is very much a lifestyle for these consumers. They don't just eat organic foods or, or go to Aveda. Uh, it affects how they take vacations. It affects how they invest their money. And they are by far the heaviest purchasers of green and socially responsible products. The second segment I'd like to talk about is naturalites. I'm just going to go clockwise around this pie. They are 15% of the population in 2009. And by the way, this survey fielded in July of this year. Uh, naturalites are interested in sustainability primarily because it, uh, if they believe it affects their personal health and wellness. So they use a lot of natural and organic consumer packaged goods because they don't want anything artificial in the products they're putting in or on or around their bodies. Third, the drifters. They are, it's a large segment, 25% of the population. It's also a segment that tends to have uh, families with young children, so they are responsible for a lot of dollars. They are an interesting segment because they're very trend sensitive, and so they very much want to be perceived as doing the right thing. And so they might be the kind of consumer that lingers in Whole Foods, or they're the kind of consumer that buys a Prius because they like the image that that car conveys. Uh, but they're looking for easy green, and they really, in particular, like the idea that by shopping, they can be considered to be doing something environmentally friendly. So while their interest seems somewhat superficial from a marketing point of view, it's an important segment because if your brand can deliver some sort of outward credibility, uh, that this consumer segment gets through our low.